Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Without wasting much time, I think we've taken a lot of our time already to do our introduction. I will, I will give you the opportunity to share what you have with our listeners this evening. Okay, well, all praise to the Most High. As you said, we are Israel United in Christ. We are a Bible-based organization, and we are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. In the Bible, there were 12 tribes that made up the 12 tribes of Israel, and we are scattered from Africa, Europe, the United States of America, Central America, South America, uh, towards Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, India as well. Uh, we were scattered from the sub-Saharan slave trade to the transatlantic slave trade. And even before that, and I'm gonna to touch on some history and we're going to discuss why nations hate our people. Mainly the so-called white man hates us. Now, before we begin in the history, because the Bible is both a history book as well as a prophetic book. I want to show the image of uh, our brother George Floyd. Uh, if you can put it up, Barakel. Okay. Here's the image of the recent four murders in the United States of America. George Floyd is the larger picture on the left. He's the one that you that they're using. Uh, to push off for all of the various insurrections from city to city, state to state. Now I'll say this, uh, Black Lives Matter is not a black organization. It is a paid organization by a white man named George Soros. And what he does, what George Soros does is causes insurrections in various cities. So be very mindful of him. So George Floyd is the most recent death before him, you had um, top right is Sean Reed, a young man who just got out of the United States military. He was murdered by the police. Beneath him in the center is uh, Amal Aubrey. He was murdered by civilians. He was not murdered by the police. In the center, he was murdered by civilians. Christian white men, men murdered him. The bottom right is Brianna Taylor. She was shot and killed by police. So again, this is not just a police thing. It's a white versus black thing. White people are revealing their true nature that they have and always will hate black people. And that's all biblical. It's all in the Bible. All right. Now I'm going to explain why nations hate us. All right, you could take that off the uh, screen bar account. Uh, give me Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. I want to explain something with this verse. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Okay, now most people, PK, don't realize. The history of Moses took place on the continent of Africa. I'm going to say it again. Most people, especially Christians, don't know the history of Moses and the Israelites took place on the continent of Africa. It did not take place in France. It did not take place in Germany or America. It's in Africa. Moses and the Israelites were in Egypt as slaves. Those were two black nations, okay? One Hamitic nation, as the Bible calls them, that's the real Egyptians, then the Israelites are another black nation, which are Shemitic. We come from Noah's son, Shem, okay? So there were two black nations who uh, were in conflict one with another. So God chose out of them to read it again, Bar Baraka. The book of Exodus chapter four, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus said the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So between the Egyptians, which were black, 
and the Israelites, which were black, God chose the Israelites. He delivered the Israelites from Egypt and destroyed Pharaoh, Ramses II. Ramses II was one of the last ruling pharaohs that dominated over the Israelites. You can, it's all in the history books, okay? So from there, we made our exodus from there and we went into the land of Canaan. As we were going towards the land of Canaan, God reminded us something about ourselves. Give me Deuteronomy chapter seven and verse six. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So what I want the listeners and the viewers to understand there is no such thing, <coughs> excuse me, as equality in the Bible. There is no, that has been a lie. There's no such thing as all men are created equal. That's a lie. Read it again. Listen to what God said. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God says that we are a chosen people above, above, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God never said all people were equal. That is a lie that the white man has pushed throughout the earth. And you ever notice when a white man says everybody's created equal, he's always on top and a black man is always on the bottom. And I'm surprised black people, especially in Africa, you ain't figured that one out yet. It's a trick to say everybody's equal. Then black people go, yes, everybody's equal. Then a white man's on top, black people on the bottom. It's always the same worldwide. So now, God says we're chosen people, a special people above all people on the face of the earth. So there's no equality. This is going to segue, <coughs> excuse me, into why nations hate us. We are God's chosen people from the continent of Africa to the United States of America and the Caribbean islands, so forth and so on. We are God's chosen people and God says we are above all nations on the faith of the earth. Watch this. Give me what Christ said in Matthew 24. Matthew the 24th chapter and let's read verse nine and 10. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse nine. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So Christ was speaking to the Israelites. Let me say it again. Jesus Christ was speaking to the Israelites. He had 12 apostles and there was a multitude that followed Christ. He told them you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Why? Because Jesus Christ came for his people. Jesus Christ did not come for all nations on the planet Earth because all nations are not equal to the Israelites. We are, give me Matthew 121. The book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You know what amazes me? You read, the angel tells Mary. You shall have a son and call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. And you let the white man trick you into thinking that means everybody on the planet Earth? Are you crazy? His people means his race. I'm going to say it again. His people means his race, his nation. That's what it means. Give me Acts 5, uh, 31. It might be verse 30. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Right. The, book of, the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, but to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So again, Jesus Christ did not come for all people on the planet Earth. He came for the Israelites, which were scattered worldwide. Now, let's get into the next thing. 
Let's get the description of Jesus before I delve further into why the nations hate us. Give me the uh, bar count. Put the image of Jesus on the screen. Ultimate FM. All right, PK, there's two images right there on the screen. One is white, one is black. People see the white one on the left and they automatically say, Jesus. All through Ghana, you see the image on the left and everybody in Ghana from Accra to Kamasi goes, Jesus, blonde hair, blue eyes, pink, red skin, Jesus. But is there any biblical description of Jesus in the Bible? Let's get Revelation chapter one, verse 14 and 15. The book of Revelation chapter one, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as well, white as snow. Hair. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Wool is a texture. White is a color, but wool is a texture. Another word for wool hair is Afro hair. Let me repeat myself. Another term for wool hair is Afro hair. So that's strike one of the white image on the left. That has straight, thin hair. So the one on the right has white wool hair, black people hair. White as snow, read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire because he drank wine in moderation. Genesis 49 verse 12 says that. Go ahead. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. So Jesus Christ looks like fine brass burned in a furnace. Brass is brown. Let me say it again. Brass is brown. Now, if you burn brown brass, it turns black. So the Bible describes Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the King of Kings, as a black man. So this image on the left with the straight, thin hair, pink, red skin, and blue eyes is a lie. The image on the left is the image of the beast, the 666, the Antichrist. Okay? So... Now that we got that out of the way, now that we know Jesus Christ came for his black people, it's going to help you understand why God chose us as his special people above all nations. It's going to help you understand why Jesus said, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, because Jesus Christ only came for his people. Jesus Christ only came for his people. Now watch this. Give me the look. Okay, you can take that off, uh, Barakah. Thank you. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 21. Now, I'm going to get into some history. Just for a moment, I'm going to get into some history. Luke 21. The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, Stop then right know. There. Stop right there. Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, was telling the Israelites that were in the land, because remember, all of them weren't in the land. You had remnants of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in some of the northern kingdoms, small remnants, but the vast majority had already fled the land from the Assyrian captivity, Babylon captivity, Greek, and Persian Mede. So let me say it again. Most Israelites had already been scattered from the time of the Assyrian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, the Persian Mede captivity, and the Greek captivity. When Rome came, this is when Christ was on, on earth. When Rome was in power, Christ said something to us. Read verse 20 again. Verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Christ is warning his black brothers and sisters, the Israelites, when you see Jerusalem, Compassed by the armies. What armies? The Roman armies. The white man's armies. Know that your destruction is near. That's what desolation means. Know that your destruction is near. What should we do then? Read on. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. He said, you Israelites which are in the land of Judah, flee to the mountains. We fled. A lot of us fled deeper into Africa. Read. And let them which are in the midst of it, depart out. And, right. let not, and let not them that are in the countries enter there into. So how do we know that a lot of the Israelites fled into Africa? 
Polis, give me Matthew 2.13. Let me show you something. Matthew 2.13. The book of Matthew, chapter 2 and verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared, appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Notice what the angel said to Joseph. Take your wife and the young child, Jesus, and flee into Egypt. Why? Because they could hide amongst the other black people there. Rome couldn't find them in Egypt. Okay? So that proves Joseph, Mary, and Christ were not white people. So again, this is taking place on the continent of Africa. Why do you guys keep thinking Europe? This is on the continent of Africa. The angel said, hide in Africa. Let's go back to Luke 21, please. The book of Luke chapter 21, verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter there into. So Christ said, and you Israelites that are outside of Israel, don't come back to this land no more because Rome was coming. The white man was coming to destroy us with their military. Read on. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Okay. But woe unto them that are with child. In those days, for there shall be great, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. So Christ said, when Rome comes. There's going to be great distress in the land and wrath upon you Israelites. Why? Because a lot of us had broken God's commandments and it was vengeance time. God was coming, raining down vengeance on us. Read. And they shall, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Stop. And shall meaning the Israelites would fall by the edge of the sword. Meaning the Israelites would fall by the edge of Rome's sword. Rome was coming in with weapons, slaughtering us in the year 70 AD. I'm going to say it again. Rome came in slaughtering us around the year 70 AD. Actually, it started 66 on up. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. A lot of us that got captured by Rome, the white man made us slaves in all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So that proves that the white man is not the real Jew in Israel. Jesus said, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So what happened? What happened? Those of us that got captured by Rome were made slaves. If you ever see movies like, there's a movie called Gladiator, where they put our people in the Roman Colosseums and they made us fight lions and tigers and bears. Okay, now, when you move on up from 70 AD, because that's when it happened when they destroyed us and made us slaves, those of us that got captured, now comes the year, listen to what I'm about to say, the year 193 AD. What happened in the year 193 AD? I'm gonna show you what happened. We overthrew Rome as the gladiators. We took it over, and I'm gonna prove that. Give me the book, Imperial Rome. Put the cover on the screen. Okay, here's the book. It's called Great Ages of Man, Imperial Rome. Rome was a power in the earth from 64 BC all the way up. But something happened in a year, around the year, let me word it that way, around the year 193 AD. Open it up. There's a list of emperors here. On my left, I'm going to read from my left. You got Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius. Lift it. Oh, you can't lift it up a bit. Uh, around the bottom, uh, let's go back to the other side. You got Julian the Apostate, Diocletian, Caracalla. Now, you see the one that got highlighted. It says Septimius Severus. That's the one I want to focus on right there, Septimius Severus. Now, if you look, they got him as a white man, okay? They have Septimius Severus as, as a white man as a statue. But let's go further into the book to see what he really was. Give me the next page. Look at the bottom. On page 141, it reads, armies based in several of the provinces 
had already proclaimed their own commanders as emperor. And one of them, Septimius Severus, now you see the next word is chopped. It says A-F-R-I with a dash. Let's go to the next page. Afri, let's see what he was. Afri, African by birth. African by birth. Septimius Severus was a black man. He was African by birth, okay? He was not Roman. He was not a white man. He overthrew all the whites with his army in the year one. This is the history not taught to us. Now, watch this. This was in Rome. Watch this. Give me the next book. Give me the book called Image of the Black. Here it is. The Image of the Black in Western Art, edited by David Bindman and Henry Louis Gates Jr. I'm going to show you we ruled Europe. Not only did we rule Rome and Italy, we ruled Spain, France, Germany, all of Europe. Open it up. Okay. Look here. If you see inside the castle on the top right, you see black men fighting, white men trying to take the castle over. We were the kings and queens of Europe for a thousand years. The white man is storming the castle, trying to take it over. Give me the next page. Here we go some more. Now history books say that these are the Moors, but these Moors are Israelites. Septimius Severus was an Israelite. Now look at the top left. You see black men trying to hold off the white man from climbing ladders, from taking over the wall, the, our watchmen. Look at the bottom, the bottom picture. You got white men on horses trying to storm the castles with black men in the castle. This is a result of what Septimius Severus had done. Now look at the top right. This is when they started to conquer us and overcome us by the time of nearing of the Renaissance era. You see the blacks on the right being slaughtered. Okay, give me the next picture. Okay, I want y'all to look at the bottom picture, bottom left. If you notice, you see black people on the far left, far left, I'm sorry, far left. In the center, you see white people on animals, and then you got more black people on the far right. Let's look up at the top right, 89. Can we get that, Barakal? Can we, can we move it over so we can see? Can you read that for us? Read that. Encirclement of the, encirclement of the Sultan of Egypt by crusaders and Christians of by Nubia. crusaders and Christians of what? Of Nubia. Of Nubia. These were black men that were crusaders and Christians. This is before the Renaissance era. This is before the white man had conquered us. Go ahead. Marino Sanudo, Liba, Secretorum, Fidelium, Crucis, um, following 15, 15V, bottom of page. Venice before 1321. Vatican, Biblioteca Apostolica Vaticana. So these things are found in the Vatican City. They have a lot of our records in the Vatican City. This painting was done before 1321. Let's look at the bottom picture again. Look at the Christians and Crusaders. Black men, can you blow it up big, uh, Barakal, for us? So it can fill the screen. Look at the, these are the Christians here. Purple, black, dark brothers. In the center, you got white men on horse, on animals. What happened? Something happened? Go back. Yes, go to the far left now. Far left, far left. Those are the Crusaders, yes. Can you blow it up big right there? Yes, yes. Oh, that's the biggest, Bishop. That's the biggest? Okay. All right, no problem. So what I want you to see this is the history not taught in Africa. This history will never be taught in Africa. This history will never be taught in America or Europe. You have to dig and find this history. Why? Because the white man doesn't want you to realize how great you actually are, because you just might unite yourselves. God forbid, okay? Was there any more images, Barakal? 
Yes, sir, on the next page. Go ahead, give it to me. Okay, this is the Pucci family in Italy. Notice these are black men in coats of arms. Further proof that we ruled Europe for a thousand years. Okay, you can look at the year, it says 1673, 1660, because they didn't push all of us out of, out of Italy. Some of us were still there. Okay, now the bottom picture, the bottom picture, you see a lot of white people in this castle. One of them is on a horse and he's jousting with an image of a black guy on a stick, on a big pole. Now go to the next page, Barakow, so we can read what this page is about. Yes, right here. Blow that up bigger and read that. Underline, I underline it, read it. In this case, a group of young gentlemen practicing the wheedling of the lands by tilting at the, at the quintine. The target figure is the bust of a dark-skinned man wearing a helmet, and the shield at which the lances are aimed bears the head of a Moor, very like the Pucci arms. The word Moor means black. M-O-O-R means black. Now go back to the picture it's making reference to. Let's see who this gentleman is practicing. This gentleman practicing jousting on it with a lance or is a white man on a horse practicing fighting an image, a statue of a black man on that wooden stake there. Can you blow that up big, Barrett Callum? Can you blow that up bigger? Look at that. This is, the, this is the secret and hidden history from black men and black women. They want you to think you were in Africa swinging from trees uh, with bones in your nose, couldn't speak or didn't have any etiquette or, 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 or understanding of science. That's a lie. They want us to think our history started with slavery and colonialism. That's a lie. The white man has done nothing but lie after lie after lie. Now, from there, thank you, Barakal. Give me Lamentations chapter 2. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 14. Now let's get into further about them hating us for being God's chosen people. The book of Lamentations chapter 2 and verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. So when it says thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, the word prophets translates to a more modern word called preacher. A prophet is a preacher. So what it's saying is your prophets have seen vain, meaning lies and foolish things for thee. All the preachers throughout Ghana, all the preachers throughout America and Europe have seen nothing but lies and foolish things for us. Read. And they have not discovered thine iniquity. What does that part mean? They have not discovered thine iniquity. They never told us why we as a people suffer colonialism and slavery. They never tell us that because we are God's chosen people, because God gave us the laws, because Jesus Christ died for us and we rebelled against the commandments of God, we went into slavery and colonialism. The preachers don't know the Bible. They could never tell us that. That's what it means when it says, and they have not discovered thine iniquity. Go ahead. To turn away thy captivity. Read. But have seen for thee false burdens and, and causes of banishment. You know what a false burden is? A false burden is a lie. They have taught us white Jesus. They have taught us Christmas, December 25th. And they have taught us New Year's Eve and Easter bunny rabbits. These things cause us to get banished from what? The kingdom of heaven that's coming. By us following these lying preachers throughout Ghana, lying preachers throughout America, lying preachers throughout Europe, it has caused us to see false burdens and causes of banishment. You know what a burden is? By us celebrating Christmas, you know why Christmas is a burden as it being a lie? We spend all our money to buy gifts for our children. A white man named Jesus died for you, for all your sin. There's no white man anywhere on earth that loves and gives his life for black people. None. Stop that lie. Stop that lie. Read on. Verse 15. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, 
Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? So when the nations conquered us, the nations clapped their hands at us. Ha! We conquered them. We overthrew them. Yes! They made, we made them slaves. They, they, we colonized them. So it says, is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty? Is this God's chosen people? Look at them. They're in Africa, suffering poverty. Look at them, slaves in America. Look at them, slaves in Europe. They're nothing now. <laughs> and they clap and rejoice. Read on. All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say, we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we look for. We have found, we have seen it. So all the nations, starting with the white man, have rejoiced as they colonized us, have rejoiced as they enslaved us, have rejoiced as they kept us in poverty after poverty after poverty. They have rejoiced. Give me Lamentations chapter three now, verse 45. The book of Lamentations chapter three, verse 45. Thou hast made us as the of, as the of coursing and refuse. Off scoring, off scoring. Off scoring, sir. Thou hast that's made like us. Shit. That's like shit of the earth. Thou hast made us as the off scoring and refuse in the midst of the people. Read. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. So all the nations open their mouth against us. They said, these people are like the off story. They're the refuse. They're the garbage people now. They're the, they're, they're the dung, the shit of the earth. That's how the white man and all the nations look at us. Read. All our enemies have opened their mouths against us. Fear and, fear and a snare is come upon us. Desolation and destruction. My Read. eye... Mine eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. So the my prophets cried when they saw the destruction of Jerusalem. We cried when we saw our enslavement and our colonization. We cried when we see this, the, the poverty of our people. We cried when we see China and America doing neo-colonialism throughout Africa, telling you your, your money is garbage, but we're going to take 500 billion worth of resources out of Africa and make ourselves rich. That's what the white man does. That's what China does. And we cry when we see this, read. Mine eye trickled down and sees it not without any intermission. till the Lord looked down and behold from heaven. Mine eye affected mine heart because of all the daughters of my city. Read. Mine, mine enemies chased me so like a bird without cause. So notice in verse 59, I mean, verse 50, I'm sorry. Verse 50 says, till the Lord look down and behold from heaven. This is where we're at now as the Lord is beholding, looking down. This is why we're waking up now. Why? Because the Lord has looked down now and he's acknowledging us and he has given us back wisdom, knowledge and understanding of his word. He's giving us wisdom and knowledge of history so that we can see where we went wrong. We can see who we truly are according to his word, okay? Now, give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, yes. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. And, and, and it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. People often ask, what is the true religion? What is the world's true religion? Now, let me tell you this. What did God give Moses? Did God give Moses commandments or did he give Moses Roman Catholic religion, uh, Protestant religion, born again religion, Baptist religion, or um, Islam? He gave Moses the commandments. Read it again. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Mm. So now, so the Lord is telling us through Moses, 
if we break God's commandments, all the curses in the Bible shall come upon us and overtake us. Let's read some of the curses. Okay, let's jump down to verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. So verse 32 says, your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people. Did the white man, let's start with the Dutch and the Portuguese, did they go throughout Africa and take the sons and daughters of Ghana and take them to uh, Elmina Castle and put them through the door of no return? Yes, it's history. That's what happened to us. Read. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Does and the that, white man go to Ghana? And does Chinese go to Ghana and take the gold, take the oil, take the uh, uh, natural resources of the land? Yes, they do. We're reading Bible prophecy. Come on. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. And thou shalt only be oppressed and crushed always. That's the prophecy. That is the judgment on us for breaking God's commandments. This is why Jesus Christ had to come to redeem us from the curses of, these, of the law. Jump down to verse uh, 48. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger meaning, and in thirst. Meaning your, your enemies will control the imports and exports of food. That's what it means by hunger. Read. And in thirst. Meaning your enemies will control the water manufacturing imports and exports. Read. And in nakedness. Meaning your enemies will control the manufacturing, the importing and exporting of the raw textile for clothes. Read. And in want of all things. If you want education, if you want religion, if you want anything, if you want medicine, your enemies would control it. That's what the Bible is saying. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Can we put that up on the screen, Barakal? Do you see this? This is a yoke of iron. This is what our enemies did to us. This proves we're the Israelites. This never happened to the white man. This never happened to the white man. This never happened to the white man. This only happened to our people from Africa to America. This is what happened to us. Give me the next picture of slavery with the yokes of iron. This was in the Congo, okay, sub saharan Africa. Yokes of iron on their necks. Give me the next picture. Sub-Saharan Africa again. Yokes of iron on our necks. Bible prophecy. Moses warned us 3,000 years ago. We didn't believe Moses. Now look at us. Give me the next picture. More of our people with yokes of iron on their neck. This didn't happen to the white man that says he's a Jew. He's not a Jew. Nothing in the Bible fits him except the devil part. We're the Jews of the Bible. We're the Israelites because we fit the curses we fit everything this Bible says fits us. Was there more barricade? Here you got women with yokes of iron on their neck, sub-Saharan Africa. Yokes of iron. Read that verse again. Read it again. Leave the picture on the screen. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So the yokes of iron came off when we were mentally destroyed. When we believe Jesus is white, they said, take the yokes of iron off. When we believe the white man is God and Jesus, they said, take the yokes of iron off. They will fight for us now. We have beat them down so bad, they love us more than their mothers and fathers. This is why when we teach this truth, what do, what do our people say? What about the white man? To hell with the white man. He's the enemy God warned us about. Give me verse 64. You can take it up, America. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Let me show you. Put the last picture that I sent to Ashana. I sent a picture 
of Africa and what they're, what they're doing in Africa in terms of worshiping other gods. I want that picture on the screen. I sent it to Captain Sean 10 minutes ago. Okay, I'm going to bring it up in a second, Bishop. Okay. So the Bible says we would be scattered amongst all people and we would worship other gods, wood and stone, which neither we nor our fathers ever knew about. What is it talking about? I'm going to show you. It's going to be crystal clear. I'm going to start with Africa. You're going to see what the, our brothers in Africa are doing. You can think the Bible's a fairy tale book. The Bible's a very real book. You just be listening to white mythology. Stop listening to the white man. Here's the picture. Leave that on the screen. Now read the verse again, Barakal. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Do you see our black brothers bowing down and kissing the Antichrist image? That white image of Jesus is Antichrist. It is the image of the beast. And notice in the background of the picture, you got the white man sitting there monitoring you black men, making sure you do exactly what he says. The black man bowing to the white man. You can't make this stuff up. The African God is a black nation for black people. And you are the only ones that worship a God that does not look like you. We should be ashamed of ourselves. The Chinese worship a white God, a Chinese God. The Arabs worship an Arab God. But the black man is the only one that worships the white man as God. And you got the black preacher, the priest right there. This is an abomination. But at the same time, it's a prophecy. Read the verse again, Barakal. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. This is made out of wood and stone. Wood and stone images. Bowing down, kissing the feet of the Antichrist. Bowing down and kissing the feet of the image of the beast. The 666. We have been warned about this. But we didn't believe nothing Moses said. We said, oh, the Bible's a fairy tale. No, the Bible's very real. Look, these are the images I'm showing you. Thank you. You can take the image off now. Bishop. Give me verse 68. Hello, Bishop. Yes, sir. I, I think that uh, it's, it's been very, very, very insightful. I have loads and loads of questions here. I, I don't know if we'll be able to go through all of them, but I will just count through and pick a couple of them for you to answer because you don't have so much time. So, oh, okay. uh, 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 yes, I think that anybody listening, I, I think that we should, we, we should have a part two of this because of all that is happening around us. Uh, with regards to the protests and, and, and all that. And uh, we, we've learned a lot of things, uh, things this evening. But I'll just pick a couple of questions and then I'll push it through to you. And uh, I think I'll start from the bottom. I have a question from uh, someone, he says, uh, jo James Beidou. He says, uh, how will you define black people? Because light-skinned people also live in Africa. Example, Egypt, Morocco, etc. How will you define black people? Okay, when we say black people, that's a general term, because he's right. There are brown skinned people that live in Egypt. Those are Arabs. Those are not our people, okay? okay. The light okay. brown people in Egypt that currently there, they descend from the nation of Ishmael. Okay. When you read in the Bible about the Ishmaelites, that's the Arabs. That's a different race from us, okay? okay? You have uh, East Indians. They are dark skin in India, but they descend from Elam. They are not the same people as us. God's people are those who, with the woolly hair, the dark skin. Now, remember, amongst us, there are what's called mulattoes, because some of us may have had children with uh, another race. So these children grow up with lighter skin. Their hair might be a bit finer, but those are still our people. So I hope you understand. Yes, I do. I have another one that says, what, okay, this one says, what is stopping Africans from teaching these to their, to the next generation 
through the school system and encouraging them to study further. What, 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 do, you, what do you think, what is it that you think is stopping us from, you know, uh, from, from the uh, presentation you've just done, it shows that you've done a lot of reading, you've done a lot of research, and, and you've applied knowledge and wisdom to what, what, you are, your, what you are sharing with us. What is preventing us from also sharing these kind of, these things with our, the next generation to ensure that they, are, they become aware of their history Ultimate and FN. don't allow, or let, let me say the white people to write their history for them and then dictate how, how our, our future goes. The only thing preventing you in Ghana from teaching what I've been sharing with you is self-hatred. Okay, so self-hatred and poverty. When I was in Ghana for some time, and I've, been, I've visited many schools, the school system suffers poverty to an extreme case. And the yeah. curriculum that you're teaching comes from Britain. Yeah. Okay, but they allowed me to go in and share what I'm sharing with you. They allowed me to go in, myself, Captain Ashan, and other brothers, to share with our brothers and sisters in these schools. We can do it. We just need men and women who can put and facilitate the finances into the necessary production of the books, the, li the literature, so that we can adequately teach it and the children can understand it with ease. Ultimate okay. FN. Okay, so, so I have, I have let, me, let me just quickly go through a couple of them and then maybe we'll just we'll quickly sum everything up. Uh, there's this one that also is asking, uh, were white people not created by God? And if that is the case, do you believe in heaven and if, and if they will make it to, if they will make it to heaven? Okay, that's I think, a good question. I think, let, me, let me try and, and paraphrase. I think he's asking if you believe in heaven and hell, and because the white were also created by God, would they make it to heaven because they are not God's chosen people? Like basically, I think that he, what, what he wants to, to ask. Okay. Heaven is going to be on earth. Heaven is not up in the sky. Barakal, can you read Matthew 6, verse 9 and 10 for us? The book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You see that part right there? Thy will be done in earth, in earth. Heaven will be on earth. It's not going to be in the sky. Now her question, his or her question is, what about the white man? How will, will they be in the kingdom of heaven? Watch Isaiah 14. Let's start there, verse 1 to 3. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. And will yet choose Israel. And well, the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. We're Jacob. Jacob is our father. And will yet choose Israel. Although we suffer colonialism and slavery and poverty, he said, I will yet choose them. Why will he yet choose us? Because what black Jesus did for us, dying on the cross for us. Read. And set them in their own land. Guess what, PK? We're going back to our own land. America is not our land. Ghana is not our land. We're going back to the land of Israel. That's where we're going back to read. And the strangers shall be joined with them. That's the other nations, the white man and the Chinese and the Arabs. They're going to be joined with us, but watch this. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. You hear what the Bible says? We're going to rule over our oppressors. We're going to rule over the white man. We're going to rule over the Chinese man. We're going to rule over the Arabs. We're going to rule and dominate all other nations on the face of the earth. Because all these nations hated us, despised us, and oppressed us. So the prophecy says we're going to rule over all our oppressors. I hope you got your answer, PK. I, I think I did. I did. I think that uh, uh, I'll, I'll I think that, 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 that came from Abu, and I'm sure if he has any subsequent uh, questions, he, he will do that. But then there's also another one which I, I want you to quickly look at. It, it, it's asking if you believe the whites used religion to enslave us, and if you can explain how they, they how, how that happened. Because oh, okay. he, I think the, what he's 
he's she's trying to ask is if uh i mean based all the things you are saying are quoted from the bible which we believe the white man brought brought here there are others or schools of thought who believe that okay we had our own religion or we had our own way of worship before the white man came in so are we saying that the white man uh, enslaved us with religion and and if if that is the case how do we even get out of of this and this slavery okay once when a white man beginning with the dutch and the portuguese and spain i'll start with those three nations when they went throughout the continent of africa they came before they brought their armies they sent forth their what's called jesuit priests the jesuit priests of the roman catholic church and they began to teach a love doctrine they began to teach us that they are jesus watch this give me daniel 8 verse 25 Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. The book of Daniel chapter 8 and verse 25. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. The white man set up many policies in Africa. I'll give you an example. The Berlin Conference. They had a policy of dividing Africa up amongst all Europeans. Read. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. How did he magnify himself in his heart? He magnified himself in his heart as Jesus. He went throughout Africa saying, we are Jesus. We are God. We are the angels. We are the Jews. We are the Israelites. That's how he magnified himself in his heart. Now watch the next part. And by peace shall destroy many. Once Africa accepted him as God, Jesus, and the angels, he used that peace by and destroyed our people. He colonized our people and enslaved our people. That's what he did. That's what he does. He did the same thing in North America with the North American Indians. The same thing. And by peace shall destroy many. That's what he did. Okay, okay. Richard. Yes, I, I think that, that is, that's crystal clear. And I hope our, our listeners will, will understand it from, from that perspective. Let me take the last two questions and then maybe could, you could wrap it up and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call it a day. Uh, one is asking if why, why it took us so long to realize our heritage. Why did it take us so long to realize our heritage? Because from, from the earlier presentation that you did, you say that we are a blessed nation. And we are hated because you are special and blessed by God. So why, why has it taken us so long to realize this beautiful heritage that God himself put on us? Mm. There was a time of dispensation where the Lord, remember he prophesied we had to go into slavery and be colonized. That took hundreds of years. That took place. Okay. But now watch this. Jeremiah 17 verse 4. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So the prophecy was we had to serve our enemies. We had to live that out. Now watch, watch this, St. John 14, verse 26. This is what Jesus Christ said would happen. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So Christ prophesied that God would send the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not what you see in these dumb churches going, ha, blah, 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 blah. that's not the Holy Ghost. That's the devil. The Holy Ghost is a spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That is what the Holy Ghost is. So the Holy Ghost brought all things to our remembrance. We're the Israelites. We went into slavery because we broke God's commandments. We ruled Europe for a thousand years, and we fell again for breaking God's commandments. Now in these last days, Christ sent, the, the Lord sent the Holy Ghost to wake us up. That's what's happening now. 
Okay, Bishop, I, 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 I like the fact that you spoke about the fact that we broke God's commandments. Can you therefore infer that we are hated by most or we are hated by other nations because we broke God's commandments and the, 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 the fury of God is on us as black people. That's why we are going through this phase as, as a people. Yes, we're going through this because we broke God's commandments. Now the nations hate us because God chose us above all nations. When you read Amos 3, can we read Amos 3 verse 1? Watch this. God, there's no, again, there's no equality in the Bible. Amos 3 verse 1. The book of Amos chapter 3 verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Yeah. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the, although God created all nations, he said he only knows the Israelites. That's why the other nations hate us. God only deals with us, not the other nations. Okay. Okay. So be before we end it, in, in, in your first, in your first, uh, the first minute of your presentation, you mentioned the word, I think that, someone wanted to ask the meaning of that particular word. He said, insurrection. I think a couple of days ago, I was watching CNN and the word insurrection, the fact that the president wanted to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, in, put it, like bring it into, into action. And so can you explain what insurrection means and how that fits into what Black Lives Matter, what, what they are doing with, with the Black Lives Matter movement? Okay, yeah, I do want to stress because uh, when you look up Black Lives Matter, it is not a black organization. Again, Black Lives Matter is controlled by the white man. They fund it. It's a white man named George Soros, S-O-R-O-S. You can Google him. You can look him up. He's the one that pays Black Lives Matters to go from city to city. Um, there's another white group that's with them called Antifa, okay? Antifa is a white group that's the ones burning down the police stations, burning cars, throwing bricks. And what they're doing, they're giving dumb black people money to help cause chaos in the city. Okay. okay? okay. Now, okay. you got that? Yeah, 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 I got that. Okay. The word insurrection is a violent uprising against an authority or government. That's what insurrection means. Okay. Okay. Okay, so basically what, what, what they are trying to say is that the, the black people or those who are engaging in this protest are, are, are rising up, up against, against the, the, their own government. Oh, is, is, that, is that what it means? Yes, that's what that means. Okay. But we got to remember, our government is God's government. We're, God's we're here government. as slaves. This is not our real government. Okay. Okay, so I, I think that, that we, we, we've been really educated and like you said, the Holy Spirit, which I, I'm taking from this, this conversation this evening, that the Holy Spirit is not, based, is not about the tongues and those things, it's wisdom and knowledge, and I will encourage everybody to seek wisdom and knowledge. So in ending it, so I'll just give you about a minute or two to just wrap everything up for us in a minute so that we'll bring the curtains down on today's program. Okay, for my fellow brothers and sisters, when we read Romans 13, verse 13, real quick, can we read that, Romans 13, 13? The book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. What I want you to see is God says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting, not in riot, we are not supposed to be rioting in the cities wherein we live. We are meant to learn God's commandments and teach them and wait for the second coming of Christ. That's what we're supposed to do. I hope everybody understands that. I know everybody's mad, but calm down. We must return to the book of our fathers, the Bible. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. 
Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.